Salutation, Serene Eminence here. I'm just spraying a bit of Dolce & Gabbana's Peony Parfum, which is essentially a precursor unto the future, wherein which I shall be reviewing Tiziana Terenzi's Andromeda Parfum. I do have a parfum review for Balenciaga's Flora Botanica Parfum, so you may reference that whilst I'm in the process of producing the Andromeda Parfum review. But in any event, I'm already ushering myself unto the future. I'm currently deepening into the present, where in which today's video is essentially the solidified trilogy of my Macy's Wine Shop critiques slash reviews. I did initially do a Macy's Wine Shop review of a trio of red wines, and I also followed that up with a critique of a trio of white wines. Today is a nine bottle box of Macy's Wine Shop wines, which includes a sextet of French rosés and a trio of white wines. Now, I wasn't initially supposed to receive a total of nine bottles of wine. However, Macy's Wine Shop did not essentially come through as I envisioned, especially given my previous experience where in which I received that in which was depicted on the actual Macy's Wine Shop website. So essentially, in order to gain access to the add-ons of either French rosés or European red wines, you have to first secure a trio, either a mixed trio, a red trio, or a white trio. I selected the white trio because those were a variety of wines that I had yet to try. And so I selected the white so that I could gain access to the French rosé trio. Now the white is around $17 for three bottles of wine and the add-on is around $27. So still under $50 for a total of six wines in total, which is a great deal in my opinion. So in any event, I secured the trio as well as the add-on and upon retrieval of the two trios, I realized that the white wines were exactly as depicted. However, the French rosés were not exactly as depicted. I actually only received one of the depicted French rosés that were actually on the website, and I received a total of four of the same. And I actually received a total of one, two, no, one, two, two of an alternative version that wasn't even listed on the website. Now it was a substitution of another Grenache Rosé wine. However, I was expecting to receive three separate varietals of the French Rosé wine. So I was a bit disheartened by that. So I did go ahead and move forward with reaching out to support, informing them of their a knowing blender um, because if they would have known then they wouldn't have depicted what's actually on the screen and send out what's not on the screen so they should have some sort of preventative measures or some precautions to have someone consistently updating given the fact that certain wines may be out of stock or unavailable and that you there should be a disclaimer that you may receive substitutions is essentially what I'm saying um, because in essence if I would have been aware that I would have received an, a substitution, then I wouldn't have reached out um, and there wouldn't have been an issue because they would have informed me ahead of time. So essentially, I reached out and they mentioned that they would provide me with a $25 credit, uh, which would be applied upon checkout, as well as send me the actual three wines that were depicted on the website in lieu of their mistake. However, they ended up sending me the same exact three wines, French Rosé wines that I already had in my possession. So I doubled up on my trio. So it's lovely to have an abundance, but I would have liked to receive what it is that they claim that I would have received. 
So what was depicted on the website was a 2020 Bernard Margray Rosé and a 2021 Bleu Azure Grenache, as well as the Le Fleur Rosé. Now I only received four of the Le Fleur Rosés and I received a substitution of the Grenache um, in the form of a Flamand Rosé, but I did not receive the Bernard Margray. So that's that. But in essence, as I said, I am glad that I did receive the abundance. So we will start off with the actual sextet of the French rosés. And the deal price, as I mentioned, was approximately $27. And since I received a trio, the actual value is $54 if I was to receive double of the add-ons. However, the actual value of receiving three of the Macy's Wine Shop Rosés plus the additional three in their actual value is $120. So each wine is around $20 as far as their value, but the deal made it so the wines were around $9 a bottle. So that was an amazing deal. And as far as the white wines, the trio that I received as depicted was totaled to $17.90 and the actual value was $50.50. And those wines were between $17 and $20, between $13.50 and $20. And so that made it in its totality that they were actually worth $50.50 in actuality. So the $50.50 accompanied by the $120 in actual value for the French Rosés equates to around $170. However, I only paid $44.50 for a total of nine wines. So even in lieu of the issue, I am pleased with the abundance. I shall not have to step foot into a wine shop or anything to re-up on my fine wine collection. So that's lovely. So we shall start off with the 2021 Le Fleur Rosé Pays de Oc, which was curated in France. And I do love the ornate bottle. It is one of the most decorative bottles that I received out of the nine. The winery for which it was curated is the Bruno Lafon. The varietal is rosé. The style is dry. The country for which it was curated is, of course, France. The region it was curated is Pays de Oc, Languedoc, Roussillon, nestled betwixt Pyrenees and the Sévigné. The alcohol by volume is 12.5%. A fun fact is that the Phocations, Greeks from the region of Phocasia, created modern rosé upon their arrival in Massalia, and Massalia is currently Marseille in France currently today. And so they created the modern rosé upon their arrival in Mar what is currently Marseille, France in the 6th century BC. So the Greeks essentially curated, but they curated it on the soil of what is now France. As an old world wine mecca and the original home of Rosé, France is the largest producer, importer, and consumer of pink wines. Characteristics include each sip offers a gorgeous melange of strawberry aroma framed by a mouth-watering crisp body. The finish is short and the smooth, beaming, fresh fruit produces a harmonious flavor of indulgent ecstasy. The, the real estate for which it was curated is a region that provides enriching high altitude soils with cooling Mediterranean breezes, perfect for delicate wine grapes like the Grenache Noir and the Sin Salt that make up each half of this Le Fleur. So this is a combination of wines. It is a rosé blend, if you will, of Sin Salt and Grenache Noir grapes. The wine flavor notes, as we stated, include strawberry, citrus, and spring flowers. Perfect wine pairings include mildly spiced curry, so Indian food, roasted lamb, or white rinded cheese like camembert, 
or pre. So we'll start, I already have actually poured a bit, but I will just add a bit more. And the bottle does have a generous amount of information and the descriptors, the characteristics that I described are embellished on the actual bottle itself. So let's take a whiff. It opens up tart and mildly refreshing. It's not overpoweringly refreshing. It's just a bit of tartness and zestiness. Now I do taste a bit of the strawberry, actually a potent bit of the strawberry. However, I would say it doesn't taste like a gorgeous red lush strawberry. It's more of the strawberry when it's in the stage of being pale white and light green. So it's in that very tart, zesty stage. It does open up with a staunch, zesty citrus flavor and then quickly finishes out into a smooth flavor, almost like a lightly whipped flavor, if you will. And that may be the soothing bit of the earthy floral undertones. Overall, it graces my palette very well. And I would accompany this meal with some sort of banana chocolate combination, specifically one of my favorite flash flavors at Sprinkles, the banana dark chocolate. I feel like the earthiness and the subtle saccharineness as well as the bittersweet notes of the dark chocolate would mesh well with these citrus and strawberry and floral undertones so that's lovely and in between sips i will be taking a bite of chocolate which is symphony chocolate one of my favorite bars which includes almond and toffee and so this is our second rosé. I'm just going to pour a bit. This is the Flame Mall rosé. I believe it's 2021. <coughs> 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 yes, 2021 Vol du Flame Grenache Rosé IGP Eau de, de France. The winery for which it was curated is Hemispheres. The varietal is Grenache. The style is dry. And of course, the country for which it was curated is in France. <clears throat> the region is Old, A-U-D-E. The alcohol by volume is 12.5%. A fun fact is that Grenache is among the driest wines in the world. Its flavor scheme appeals to many of whom enjoy intense fruity notes and herbal overtones. Sounds delightful and right up my alley. Characteristics include, the nose brims with aromas of pink floral essence, apricot, red currant, and blood orange. This pink drink more than lives up, more than lives up to its striking namesake with bright acidity on the palate and a refreshing finish. Yvonne Mo created Vol du Flamant as a liquid embodiment of the flamingo, poised, elegant, and striking, with winemaking origins dating back to the 19th century. This Bordeaux-based winemaker selected the best Grenache grapes in southern France and softly pressed the fruit to preserve the varietal's delicate aromas. The wine flavors, of course, include pink flower, apricot, red currant, and blood orange. 
perfect wine pairings include light dishes such as marinated chicken, raw vegetables, and red fruit dessert. So, as we see, we have the lovely flamingo adornment, which is beautiful in association with the rose color. I love the italicized notations, and I do adore that they have lovely descriptors on the back. I do wonder if Flamant is similar to the actual iteration of Flamingo. They sound very similar as far as their base. So let's take a lovely whiff. It opens up a lot more fruit forward than the previous rosé, which makes sense because of the apricot and red currant flavors that embody this actual combination. It's much more lively in its essence. And the red currant and the apricot mingle very well in a divine dance of tartness and uplifted refreshingness. Like it's refreshing yet subtly sweet yet you still feel the vibrancy of the actual fruit. It would pair really well with a fruit salad. I really do adore this one. I would accompany this with a raspberry dessert, <clears throat> some sort of raspberry beignet or even a raspberry cheesecake. I don't quite taste much of the actual pink flower or the blood orange. It's I guess, you know, blood oranges are a little less citrusy than actual oranges or other citrus fruits such as lemon or lime. So I guess that makes sense. But even though it's supposed to be the driest of wines, it tastes a bit more lubricating and less dry than the previous wine. But the previous one did also have Grenache. So there may be a difference as they mentioned they pressed the grapes to enhance the delicacy so that might have thwarted some of the actual dryness it's not intense to the point of overwhelmment it's actually quite perfect in my opinion i would also accompany this with a lovely light seafood dish something of the sort um like lemon pepper shrimp or capers and shrimp with a lemon crema sauce i think that would taste lovely or even garlic and lemon tossed Brussels sprouts. I think that would taste divine. Our first, <coughs> lost the cork, our first amidst the white wine trio is the 2020 Mir Salut Chardonnay. And I do like the simplicity yet the depth of the dimensions and the abstract portrait-esque painting on the front and they do have a slight bit of information regarding the wine on the back so that is appreciated I am information based so and I love hearing the backstory of what it is that I'm indulging in it gives it a sort of poetic touching way to draw me in and it's more of an all-encompassing, comprehensive form of engagement 
with various products so that's always beautiful so the 2020 Mirsalu Chardonnay was curated in the winery of Satterhorn Cellars. The varietal is Chardonnay, the style is dry. The country for which it was curated is the US and the region is California. This has a higher alcohol by volume than the previous French Rosés at around 13.5%. A fun fact is that the Count of Champagne, Theobald IV, on his return from the Crusades in Palestine in the 13th century, made a stopover in Cyprus, where he found an exceptional white grape that captivated him from the first moment. On the way home to his country, he passed through Burgundy, leaving sediments of deposits of the grape in the region that made the Chardonnay grape famous. Chardonnay grape is the only white grape that is approved for the production of Champagne. Together with Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, Chardonnay is also the only grape that is used for the popular Blanc de Blanc's Champagne. And I have indulged in a Blanc de Blanc, Blanc, de Blanc Champagne, which was an entitled Perfect Blanc de Blanc. And I did partake in that when I was indulging in the wellness suite at the Venetian Tower. I will link that resort suite review for your viewing pleasure. Characteristics include that it takes on a bolder, richer white wine than most other wines. The nose opens up with toasty autumnal aromas of baked apples and ripened mangoes. Accents of white pepper and hazelnut form a fragrant trifecta in tandem with these subtle hints of chamomile. Medium acids brighten the palate with a lovely, long, fruit-driven finish. Originating from the rolling hills of Central California, this balanced Chardonnay benefited from sunny days and constant maritime breezes. An elongated growing season baked in with sweet sugars and bright acidity in each one of the Chardonnay grapes is what makes up the 2020 Mirsulu in its defining essence. The wine flavor notes, of course, include baked apple, mango, white pepper, and also hazelnut and chamomile. Perfect wine pairings include various Thanksgiving themed entrees, such as roasted turkey and glazed yams, as well as Italian cuisine, including chicken piccata. Lemon chicken piccata is my all time favorite dish. So let's see if this shall be a perfect accompaniment. It opens up nutty with warm, cozy tones. It's very lush and lightly decadent in the sense that you can feel the multitudinous, multitudinous notes intermingling with one another. And it actually develops as you intake it. You first are lavished in the cozy, warm art autumnal notes. And then you get a little sparkling of the effervescence of the white pepper. And it's balanced with the nutty hazelnut undertones. And then as you fully drink it in, you have this beautiful aftertaste or accumulation, if you will, of the tart yet subtly sweet ripened mango essence so this is by far one of my favorites out of the three that we have already partook in even in comparison to the french rosés and i would say this would pair perfectly well with a lemon chicken piccata and definitely inc include extra capers and maybe a little bit of olives i feel the tartness would accompany the overall essence of this wine very well. It's very delicate and balanced, yet, like I said, it develops and you can feel the essence of its character opening up 
as you indulge in it. I'm very fond of this wine, very much so. We are moving on to our second white wine, which is the Flores Sauvignon Blanc 2021. A bit of informative inscriptions on the back we have there. So, the 2021 Flores Reserva Sauvignon Blanc Valle Central Chile was curated in the winery Crimachi Furloti. The varietal is Sauvignon Blanc, of course, the style is dry. The country is Chile and the region is Valle Central. The alcohol by volume is 12%. And a fun fact is that Sauvignon Blanc famously displays a grassy, herbaceous, and some would say a polarizing green character with tasting notes such as gooseberry and bell pepper. These flavors are attributed to a series of compounds called methoxyprazines, or simply pyrazines. A series of compounds called methoxyprazines pyrazines or simply pyrazines. Pyrazinic flavors are typically more pronounced in wines from cooler regions and they can similarly be traced in Cabernet Sauvignon. Characteristics include that this 2021 Flore Reserva Sauvignon Blanc shines with bright acidity and stony minerality a unique characteristic of wines that are curated in the Central Valley, specifically whites. Fragrant notes of green apple and lime complement herbaceous accents of acacia flowers and lemongrass. The finish is short and crisp with a final refreshing twist of citrus. How poetically lovely that rhymed all the way through towards the end. Wine flavor notes, of course, include green apple, Lime complements the herbaceous hints of acacia flowers as well as the accompaniment of lemongrass. Perfect wine pairings include light dishes such as roasted asparagus, salmon sauteed tartare, and cold water lobster tail. So let's delve into this lime, lemongrass, acacia flower essence. It is very minerally. The, the minerality really speaks to me upon first whiff. There's not a lot of nuance transpiring. And I would say that as far as the lime, it almost tastes as if I am sipping on the essence of the rind. Um, I'm not really feeling the essence and the zestiness and the sourness of the lime completely, but I do understand the lemongrass essence because it's not completely lemony but there is that undertone of being herbal with a slight undertone of lemon essence there also feels like a hint of organic vanilla not vanilla that's pressed um and processed but more of a smoothing effect that brings the lime and the lemongrass and acacia flowers together and i think that this almost milky smooth slightly silkened essence is the essence of the acacia flower So stepping away from this, 
there isn't a developing undertone where it almost feels as though it it blossomed as if a, a bouquet of beautiful flavors blossomed for me to deeply and presently step into. It felt like a burst of springtime. So that's a beautiful ending to wrap up the almost ambiguous beginning. And I would accompany this particular drink with possibly an arrabbiata style Italian dish, something spicy that really complementarily uplifts the essence of this. And I feel like the aftertaste would really harmonize well with a bit of spiciness, especially given, given the association with the bell pepper-esque taste, the bell pepper-esque flair, given the, is it pyrazionic? Pyrazinic. Pyrazinic flavors of the gooseberry and the bell pepper, I think it would accompany something spicy exceedingly well. And so now we have the final white wine, which is the Canary Row. I do like the green tinted bottle, similar to the Mirsalu. And I like the all green decoration on the bottle. I think it's a beautiful, seamless, symmetrical color complement. I love seamless color symmetry, so that's lovely. And I do believe the bottle, the actual bottle design is reminiscent of a book that was published. I don't recall which one, but I will touch on it here in the description. So this 2021 Canary Row White Blend curated in California was curated in the winery of Canary Row Cellars. The varietal is a white blend, so a blend of multitudinous white grapes or grapes that produce white wines. The style is dry, the country is US and the region for which it was curated is California. The alcohol by volume is 12.5%. A fun fact is that the white blend refers to any white wine that contains more than one white grape varietal in the final product. Though certain white blends can have their own designations as recognized wines, despite compromising multiple grapes. So although multitudinous wines are intertwined, their actual essence is not compromised during the combination process. I believe they choose select white wine grapes that complement each other very well, and they're very delicate in their process of curating and ensuring that they complement each other very well without compromising their essence. Discovery 22 2021 Canary Row White Blend is a fruity, refreshing white wine named for the historic section of the California coast that inspired John Steinbeck's writings. This blend of white wine varieties thrives in the Golden State vineyards and melts tradition and beauty with California's celebrated spirit of innovation. In 1945, American author John Steinbeck published Canary Row. The novel captures the essence of the seaside town of Monterey with its quality of light, a tone, a habit, a nostalgia, a dream, striving to assure that the bottle encapsulates that same spirit of innovation. The winemakers of Canary Row Cellars have earned accolades for their deftly created wines that are full of flavor and excitement. Characteristics include that it has inviting aromas of lavender and white flowers that greet you upon uncorking. Medium bodied and brimming with rich flavor, the palate reveals a medley of citrus and orchard fla fruits, flavored fruits like lemon and apricot. These notes carry into a smooth, satisfying finish. Of course, the wine flavors include notes of apricot, lemon, and flowers. Wine pairings include 
citrus-based grilled chicken or romaine salad. So let's take a lovely lavish sip of this Canary World white wine. Really? Let me take one more. It opens up with a hint of effervescence and the apricot is present but there is a staunch sense of ambiguity in this wine. I don't feel the notes flirting with each other in a way that makes it seem as though they complement each other. It almost seems as if the grapes that they utilize do not complement each other. I would have loved if they completely divulged which of the grapes they blended together, such as with the French Rosé, or in which they blended the Grenache Noir and the Sin Salt. This does not give me a clear depiction of what is completely being digested on my behalf. The poetic description and the association with the actual book that was published is lovely in itself and the association with the encapsulation of the Monterey area in California is lovely. However, there is not a clear understanding of the what my flavor palette is attempting to translate. It is essentially ambiguous in its very nature and I don't feel like anything is really pushing forward as far as the flavor notes and the flavor notes just don't mesh well together. There's also actually as I'm allowing it to develop on my palate there is a unsettling aftertaste that I can't quite put my finger on. I can't quite see what I would pair this with as I don't even know if I shall actually further engage with this wine. So that is an interesting way to end off this actual wine review, but we always move forward with transparency and the Canary Row white wine blend is not up to par as far as being aligned with my caliber especially being a connoisseur of excuse me various wines so everyone's taste is subjective so you may feel different but this may just be a bad batch or not enough thought care and consideration was put into actually curating this particular white wine blend so in any event i thank you kindly for tuning in to my sextet of french rosés and my trio of white wine review further solidifying my trilogy of the macy's wine shop reviews this shall be my final one in association with the macy's wine shop i could move forward with reviewing the red wine european add-ons but given my experience with the mistakes that were unfolding in association with the website i don't feel as though i will be moving forward if i do find an alternative means of reviewing wines i shall i shall move forward with that but in any event i thank you kindly for tuning in beautifully beloved beings i should be taking one last sip of the Flore Sauvignon Blanc, one of my favorites amidst the white wines. It's very divine. So I shall link all of my pertinent plat platforms below for your reference and review if you'd like to connect with me further. But until next time, beautifully beloved beings, stay serene.